Hello and welcome to my video on Costier. So I have just had Costier in my pond. What is Costier? Well this is Costier. So this what you're looking at right now is Costier. Now Costier is actually quite difficult to see under the um, microscope. This is at 100 times. Uh, there is also a fluke there to the left. I've got a few fluke as well and I'm treating for both. Costia is a difficult thing to find on a microscope because it's so small but it's also very picky on which fish it is on. You might find it on one fish and you might find that it is not on another fish. Which can make it quite difficult to diagnose. So as you can see these fish are quite happy at the moment, they're really healthy. These fish do not have Costia anymore. Uh, the reason why I know that is because of the treatment cycle which we'll get through to in a minute but first I'll start with the reason why I've got Costia. So honestly I have no idea why I actually got Costia. I haven't put any new fish in this pond for about three months and they go through a, quite a good quarantining cycle. I will have changed it uh, due to this thing. Uh, so the quarantine cycle will be changing from now onwards to make sure this doesn't happen again. However the fish that the quarantine should not really have had costia, it should have come out of them in the quarantine system. So it's completely a mystery to me why they got costia. Also, they got fluke at the same time. Again, that's exactly the same thing. Total mystery to me. They must have just been sort of dormant on the fish and just picked the right moment to come out on them. Unfortunately, the moment they chose to come out on them is when I went on holiday for a fortnight. So I wasn't actually here monitoring the koi, um, I do have cameras, I can watch them remotely, so I did know that there was something going on, but I didn't quite know to the extent of the issue until I got back, uh, which delayed me by a fortnight on the treatment, so I could have perhaps saved a few more koi than what I did um, if I'd have been more on the ball with the treatment. So. You may have seen the previous video where I treated with potassium permanganate. Now, the potassium permanganate really did me a favour. It helped these fish that are in this tank at the minute, no end. Uh, the, the potassium isn't the ideal treatment for costier. It did work, however, on the ones that didn't have costier, very, very much costier. And the reason for that is, with costier, it's quite problematic to treat. Now, Costia attacks the gills of the fish uh, and that's what happened with the fish that have died. It gets on the gills, eats away at the gills so that they don't work as well and then the fish's immune system also starts to work against it. So the, the immune system detects that there is something wrong with the gills then what happens is it starts producing mucus. Now, if it were producing mucus and there was some chemical in the water, um, then that would be great. It would protect the gills from that chemical. However, it wasn't a chemical, it was costia. So actually what happened is the mucus sealed the costia into the gills and prevented the chemical I put in, potassium permanganate, from actually getting to the costia. Uh, and killing the costia. So the fish ended up protecting the costia that was killing them from the treatment that would save the costia. Uh, however the fish that didn't have costia and didn't do that mucus, these fishes, um, would have lost the costia because of the potassium manganate. Now what happens is the costia get on the gills, it causes the mucus, the costia themselves eat away at the gills and the mucus blocks up the gills because it got quite bad on some of the fish and the fish just suffocates to death it's quite a nasty death but fairly fast to be honest um, I had a few fish that were literally as happy as these ones are and they were dead in 24 hours because they couldn't get over the costia now these fish still have a few flukes but they definitely don't have costier. The green stuff in the pond, I'm not going to tell you what that is, it's a waste of time, I wouldn't bother with it, I don't think it helps at all. Uh, 
it may have done a little bit for the fluke, but not as good as other treatments such as fluke solve. Um, but there we go. The the thing that's killed the costier in this pond is the heat of the pond. Now costier can't survive over 28 degrees, so it's made sure heating them to 30, which they are currently at, has made sure that there are no costier left. Now. I knew before I treated these koi that they didn't have costia, so why did I heat treat them? Well, I wasn't scraping, I was scraping them and I wasn't getting any costia. Now, that doesn't mean that they didn't have it. That fish that I scraped and showed you earlier on the scrape was also after the treatment. So, that fish, the treatment, potassium permanganate and this green stuff didn't help it at all. Um, but the heat would have done but that koi has now died it was well past any help in that fish unfortunately um, it's kinda you know it's a sad thing but it does happen with the koi keeping hobby you, you're you not gonna you're not gonna have it's not a carefree hobby you know it was risky going on holiday I would have saved a lot more if I hadn't have done it, all bad timing just bad timing everything everything worked against me on this one but we're over it we've sort of got over the hill now we're not perfect uh, some of the fish you might see have actually got a few scars on them and that but that is again where the heat comes in so they're at 30 degrees at the minute their immune system will be working like crazy so that itself will kill any diseases bacteria and stuff like that on the fish to help them repair themselves um, their digestive system's working like crazy, so they're eating quite a lot, which is nice. It's nice to see them eating again and being happy and stuff like that. So the heat has other advantages rather than just killing the costia, but I did it to specifically kill the costia that would be hiding on the fish and couldn't be scraped for because costia can hide internally in the fish because it's that small. It can be in the bloodstream of the fish and it can be you know, an internal thing so there could have been still cost you on these koi but I'm pretty much guaranteed with the heat that they are not any cost you left so let's have a look at the heat so the heat of this pond is currently 30 degrees I'll show you with this meter Oh, yeah, there you go, 30 degrees Celsius. That is very hot. These fish, you know, are doing really well. It's too hot, 30 degrees is well too hot. This water is really noticeably hot, even to the touch, you can comfortably, you know, get in that. that that's almost swimming pool hot, that is. One downside is this is an indoor pond. Um, it is ridiculously hot in here. The air temperature has to be hotter than the water temperature, so the air temperature is 33 degrees. It is unbearable to be in here. Uh, even this camera struggling a little bit, getting a bit warm. Um, but, you know, it, that's the problem. However, I don't know how it would go on outside. Uh, the air temperature is quite an advantage to me because it, it also heats the water up but I don't know how that would go on an outdoor pond. It might be more difficult to heat to 30 degrees. Obviously this is a 9,000 gallon pond, so it's difficult enough, but if it was outside, I think it may have struggled to get to 30, even with the powerful heater that is on it. So there we go. Let's have a look at the heating system on this pond, shall we? So let's go and have a look at the heating out. And downstairs we go. So this is the 8 kilowatt heater. Now this is a very expensive to run heater. It's just like a kettle inside here is an element. Uh, the element looks like this. As you can see, the element just coils along the length of the actual uh, pipe. And it's quite, you know, a big coil as well. So you can imagine how much power that coil actually draws. And it draws a lot. This thing has cost me about 20 pounds a day during the heating process so I've been 
raising it one and a half degrees per day that's probably about the maximum recommended um, heating uh, per day is one and a half degrees now I'm really happy with this heater don't get me wrong I'm not happy with the cost of it I'm really happy with what it's done for me after today I'm gonna to turn it off in a minute it'll never run again unless I need it to it's just not something I want to pay out for if you need a heater on your pond to keep it above say 13 degrees in winter uh, then if you need a more than a three kilowatt one of these or you know three kilowatt and above one of these don't bother get an air source heat pump you want a thousand watts so one kilowatt per thousand gallon uh, this is a 9,000 gallon pond, 8 kilowatt heater, it's done me really well but obviously it's indoors and really well insulated. Um, however, keeping it, maintaining the 30 degrees for the past few days, for the past three days it's been at 30 degrees and settling, it's cost me about £10 a day and slightly over that. So it's not major bad once it's at temperature and if you obviously, obviously you won't be heating it to 30 degrees if you're in winter but uh, it's just something to know that something like this is a hell of a lot costly to run uh, so it's cost me about £100 to do the whole heat treatment maybe it's just turned off to do the whole heat treatment for this pond the problem with that is there is no problem with that the £100 sounds like a lot of money to treat this pond, it isn't. This is a 9,000 gallon pond. The green stuff in that pond cost me about 150 quid. Uh, if I was to treat with fluke solve, I think that's about £100. Yeah, I use two packets of that, then almost 50 quid a packet. About £100. So, as a chemical treatment, it usually costs me more than £100 to treat. Potassium permanganate doesn't cost me very much, I'm bulked by it. Um, but yeah, that's cheap for testing for magnet. So that, that doesn't cost me a lot to treat with, but other treatments for flukes and stuff do cost quite a lot of money. Uh, so £100 with electric, it was worth it. It really was worth it. Because this is treated more than any chemical would have done. Obviously, the chemicals can't get into places where the costier can, whereas the heat can. The heat can, you know, the heat covers the whole pond, and Costia can't stand more than 28 degrees, so 30 kills them straight away. And uh, that, so yeah, I've been really happy with this heater for the heat treatment, but unfortunately, this is the last time it will be on. If it's ever on again, I might make a video on it. So, you know, it's just one of them things. Even, even though I've just turned it off, by the way. And that's how it turns off and then you know the screen's off and then what I can do is open this ball valve to bypass it and then close the right way close them ball valves and it's closed off and then what I'll do is I'll remove that rubber joint and drain it of water and it can sit there dry until next time I need it But hopefully I won't need it. That's just a, it's just on now as a, if I need it, and at least I've got it. You know, uh, if I had a, maybe heat treated a little bit sooner, I might have been able to, you know, help some more fish. That is definitely going to be my first thing. So this time, you know, it took me about three weeks to actually get to the point where I was heat treating with. I uh, first treated it with potassium permanganate. If I was to find Costia now, heater would be straight on. No question around it, heat it, get it to 30 degrees and treat it. I can treat it as well as heat it, that's not a problem. The only thing is, at this temperature, I kind of have to be careful with things like potassium permanganate, which remove oxygen from the water, because Obviously at this temperature you can see the fish are actually quite breathing kind of fast and that's because there's not actually that much oxygen in the water because it can't hold that much oxygen at 30 degrees. And again, some of you will know that I have sturgeon in this pond. Now the sturgeon would have died a long time ago at 30 degrees but he's not in this tank any longer. 
So he went through the treatment with Costia and he doesn't appear to have Costia. But he is now in his own little vat and he seems to be quite happy actually. It's currently dark outside so I'll wait till morning. So this is the vat the surgeon's in. Just chucked him a muscle in there, let's see if he gets it. Is he gonna get it? Oh, sniffed it, yeah, like that. Yeah, he's, he's been getting really well fed in this vat because the koi haven't been nicking his food. But uh, he's doing well. He ain't got any costume on him at all, so he's, he should be alright. And uh, I'll leave him in this tank until the other pond cools down. Or see if I can find him a new home. Uh, probably a lake or something like that behind me, but we'll see what happens. But for now, he's stopping in there. So there we go, that is my video on heating the koi pond to treat for costia. It is now the next day, so it has dropped, let's have a look, it's dropped 29.4 degrees. So it's dropped 0.6 degrees in about 20 hours, which is quite acceptable. If you've got an outdoor pond, you might not be able to turn the heater off, you might have to keep the heater on, just increment it down to a more acceptable temperature. Um, but as long as it doesn't drop more than a degree and a half a day, you're fine. Uh, well, I've just turned the heater off completely. So there we go. Let's give these a quick feed. So there you go. Any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you for watching my video, and I'll see you in the next one.